Welcome to Cubs baseball here on Marquee Sports Network. Tonight it is game two, Giants and Cubs from Wrigley Field. Oh, Murphy's bringing in. Professor gives class on how to slay a giant. Cubs at 640. Join us, won't you? All right, here to look at the uh, standings. Cubs right now two and a half back in the central. They have the second spot for the wild card position in the National League. Phillies ahead of them. And the Diamondbacks, Reds, Marlins, Giants all chasing. And welcome to the broadcast booth. John Chambi and Joe Girardi yesterday. A lot of fun. Justin Steele was outstanding. But Seiya Suzuki, for the better part of a month now, has been super productive. That continued yesterday. Yeah, since the Cubs gave him those three or four days off in the beginning of August, he has really been on a tear. He's been more aggressive in the zone, and he's been hitting the ball out of the ballpark. The extra base hits, six home runs, just received an award for player of the month in August. And he's been a big part of their winning ways. An OPS over 1,000 in August. You see him driving the ball to center, to left. I mean, he's been a big part of why they're winning these games. Yeah, and as far as pitching is concerned, you get Kyle Hendricks going in this one against a Giants team that has really been scuffling. But Kyle's best start of the year was against San Francisco. Yeah, on June 10th, he went eight innings and only gave up one hit to Mitch Hanniger, who's not in the lineup tonight. He gave up a double with two outs in the the bottom of the eighth, but he was outstanding with his changeup. He was outstanding with his sinker, just doing what he does, making balls look like strikes, and then they disappear. Yeah, no doubt. Last three starts been really good, including his last time out, did not allow an earned run against the Brewers. We'll continue with more. Stick with us here on Marquee. It's the Cubs, the Giants, game two of this three game set. He's going to be mic'd up, and we're going to talk to him at the top of the third. Bellinger. Hitting in the cleanup spot at Hill Patrol center field. Meanwhile, Jan Gomes behind the plate. Two hits yesterday. He'll be catching the Professor as the Cubs look to pick up another win against the Giants. We'll have the lineups and first pitch coming up. Chicago Cubs baseball on Marquee Sports Network is brought to you by Blue Cross Blue Shield. Through it all by Ford. Visit your local Ford dealer today. And by Menards. Save big money at Menards. Suzuki crushes that one out towards center. Way back. That ball is gone. Suzuki stays hot. Number 15. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Justin Steele. He is an ace. Here at Wrigley tonight, it's the Cubs and the Giants game two of this three game series. And Cubs looking for more quality work on the mound with Kyle Hendricks on the hill. John Chambi and Joe Girardi as we get set for baseball here tonight. The professor getting ready to take the hill. We send it downstairs and say hello to Taylor McGregor. Luke, it was quality work from Kyle Hendricks last time on the mound for him against the Brew Crew. Gave up just one earned run across six innings pitch. And in that start, we saw a heavy dose of changeups. And really, you look at his last handful of starts, that's been the story over the last five. He's utilized that changeup about 45% of the time, which is more than his previous 14 starts. David Ross saying today he has been stubborn with that pitch because he feels like it's playing so well. And of course, when you couple good fastball command with an elite changeup, that's a recipe for success. We'll see how it plays out tonight. Highest changeup usage of his career at 39%, and they're hitting 163 against the starting pitcher for the Cubs, brought to you by Budweiser. This Bud's for you. And there it is, Joe Girardi. Yeah, you're going to see mostly sinkers from him when you look at his fastball. He does throw a four-seamer, but his changeup has been so effective. I like the little curveball to mix it in once in a while. you got to pick your spots early in count, get some free strikes. But his last five starts, Boog, he has been excellent. I check out the lineup that he'll go up against for the San Francisco Giants. Their lineup is brought to you by UI Health, 13th in the National League in runs per game out of 15 teams. Here's the lineup for them. That is their normal lineup against right-handed pitching. Wade at the top, good on base guy. Ben Yastrzemski and Flores. Peterson, Sable, Davis, Crawford, Meckler, and Tyro Estrada will hit ninth. They've had problems getting on base. They've lost four straight. And since August 5th, they've gone 9 and 19. And they are really scuffling, fighting for a playoff spot. 
We mentioned Kyle Hendricks, a guy that throws that changeup, generates a lot of soft contact. And so the defense is almost always a factor with him. Defensive setup of the Cubs brought to you by Blue Cross Blue Shield. Hap, Bellinger, and Suzuki left to right. Madrigal, Swanson, Horner, Candelario third to first. Gomes behind the plate. And it's time now for our keys to the game. They're brought to you by your local Hyundai dealer. Well, Kyle Hendricks just follow suit. The last seven games, the Cubs are five and two, and the starters have a one, three, seven ERA. Start fast. Over his last four starts, he's given up seven runs, six of them in the first two innings. So let's try to clean that up a little bit in buildings, right? You're going to face the starter today in, in Ryan Walker. It looks like he's throwing around a building. He's going to be throwing towards the on deck circle of the Cubs, and you're going to try to hit it to the buildings. That's the key. First pitch swinging is Wade, and he unloads deep into the night. One pitch and one nothing Giants. For Wade, number 14. And for Kyle, that's the 12th home run he's given up this season. Yeah, this just looks like it's a fastball that's up in the zone. He's trying to get ahead of him. It's a sinker that's belt high, and we saw what happened to Logan's Webb's sinker when it was belt high. And you look at this, and he just gets everything he can into that swing, and he hits the ball out of the ballpark. Throws more sinkers than four seamers, but he'll throw the four seamer to lefties. That was a four seam fastball. And Wade hits it out, so a homer makes it one nothing. Now nothing get one to Yastrzemski. Kyle back to work. Popped up. On the infield, Dansby Swanson. And on the dirt, makes the catch. Well, had a lot of hang time, Boo. Kept yeah. waiting for it to come down. He likes pop-ups, man. It's like he's, he calls every once in a while, say he calls a fair catch. <laughs> and he sits there and he just waits on it. But you can tell he likes going after balls in the air. One away, one nothing Giants, and here is Wilmer Flores. And that's in for a strike. This guy's been their best hitter. Yeah, and, and he doesn't strike out a lot either, Boog. I mean, he's really aggressive. He only strikes out about 14% of the time. And he'd be 12th in the MLB if he had enough at bats. He just doesn't. He doesn't play every day. Struggling as of late, though. Three for his last 22, but he's a guy. He's dangerous. I mean, he is really dangerous. 1-1 one, one from Kyle. In the air, out towards center. Swanson and Horner. Swanson and Horner joined by Bellinger. And Cody makes the catch. So two down now. Gabe Kapler's team. Since the break, they are last in the majors in runs per game, last in batting average, last in OPS, last in homers. Now, obviously, they play their home games in a ballpark that is not homer friendly, but it still speaks to the lack of production that they've got. Because if you remember, that team that won 107 games in 2021, they scored and scored in bunches and they hit a lot of home runs is, is what they did and this team does not have that power that that team had a couple of years ago. Yeah, the Giants that year were second in the majors in homers hit playing half their games in Oracle Park which is amazing. They had 10 guys hit 10 or more homers that year. But again as we told you they still have not had a 30 homer guy since Barry Bonds in 2004. He had a few more than 30 though. He did. He had 45 that year. I think the Cubs dug out giving it to Jock Peterson pretty good. David Ross barking at him. You can see Jock was smiling over there. On the ground, hard hit, but right at Nico. Gobbles it up, throws out Peterson. Hey, how you doing? Giants have the early lead. It is 1-0. Giants lead 1-0.
on the Lamont Wade Jr. solo homer. Cubs lineup brought to you as always by Finney's Beverage Depot. If you can't find it at Finney's, it's probably not worth drinking. The Cubs are third in the National League in runs per game. And for David Ross, same lineup as yesterday. Tuckman, Horner, and Hap, Bellinger, Swanson, Suzuki, Candelario, Gomes, and Madrigal. Tonight, it's Tuckman in the DH spot, and Cody will control center field. Starting pitch for the Giants brought to you by Budweiser. This Bud's for you. Well, 50-50 fastball slider, and he'll get up to 97-98. If he does go out for a second inning of work, you might see that velocity fall off a little bit. But if you look at him, he looks like when he comes to his set that he's pitching to the batter in the on deck circle, not at home plate. <laughs> that is a crossfire in yeah. there for a strike at 95. You know what you say on a day like today, Boo? Go get them, lefties. Because this is not a comfortable at bat for a righty. No. Talkman at the plate, the former Giant. And yeah, that's in there for a strike, says Jensen Visconti. And yeah, it's nothing in two. You can see the good sweep on this slider. It starts off over the white line and it comes back over the plate. The miscue for Sable there. Oh, two to Talkman. Swing and a miss. And Walker gets the strikeout to begin. The defensive setup for the Giants is brought to you by Ford. And you take a look at the defensive slab TV term. Peterson, Meckler, Yastrzemski left to right in the outfield. Davis, Crawford, Estrada, Wade Jr., Sable behind the plate. Yeah, if you're a right-hander, he's going to be really tough on you because his fastball is going to run in on you, and then he has that big sweeping slider. So as soon as you can pick it up, it's important, but he hides the ball really well. Pitch in for a strike, and it's one and one. Hey, real quick, normally I don't air the dirty laundry, but just as the person playing Ron Burgundy in this, reading the sponsors, just want to tell the teleprompter guy, you got to go slow for Ron Burgundy. Porter fouls one away. I mean, we're doing defense by Blue Cross Blue Shield and I'm doing defensive setup is brought to you by blue and the things <laughs> moving. Help a brother out. We've well, established I'm not very good at this. Just go slow for the guy. San Diego. Next pitch is in there and corner is gone. Well this is actually a good pitch and he's you know it, it looks funny because Sable the catcher set up inside and he throws it back across the outside. He's not the framer, the kid that we saw yesterday. Yeah, Bailey, outstanding framer. Number one in baseball, Patrick Bailey. This can't be easy to catch, though, with this movement either. Half a swing and a miss. But we'll see what they do for the bulk innings here tonight. It's effectively this year been a two man rotation for them. I mean, sincerely, it's been Webb and Cobb, and now it's Harrison. But Gabe Kapler has pointed to the pen a ton. How much no team has had more innings thrown by their bullpen than the Giants? It's just done a little bit different because they have their bulk guys, you know, that might go four or five innings. Manaya is one of those guys. Yeah. Junis is one of those guys. You know, you might see Alex Wood is one of those guys in this series. But they do make the point, and I know that around the game, it's a funny thing inside the game. You hear the the comments. They're not trying to be smarter than people. They're trying to win the games. If they had Aaron Nola and Zach Wheeler, they'd start them. They wouldn't come in in the third. You know what I mean? And line foul. It's a way that you don't have to pay starters twenty million dollars a year. It's the other. You know. So what you do is you get through the the first part of the lineup once, and maybe the bulk guy who is a starter basically only has to see the tough part of the lineup one time, and then you turn it over to the back end of the bullpen. In games that he has started, Walker, and he doesn't go long, they're seven and four. That's 
pretty good. That'll get you to the playoffs. Two balls, two strikes to Hap. So now it's three and two. Last 15 appearances for this guy at 093 ERA. Career in the minors, he only made three starts. And a 3 2. Upstairs outside, and Hap with a two out walk. And so the inning extended, and here comes Bellinger. And because he's only made three starts, he's a starter that actually runs from the bullpen. He didn't come from the bench. He just tries to keep that reliever mentality. Ian Happ continues to see a slew of pitches. He's been in the top 10 in terms of most pitches seen for an individual player all year. As Bellinger takes a strike on the inside corner. The Cubs as a team lead the majors in pitches per plate appearance. The 0 1. Strike two. It's a frisbee. Is what it is. There's that number that we talked about. It's a characteristic I feel like you saw more from those Yankees teams that you played on and then the Boston teams in the early 2000s. Just off the outside. Well, the, edge. the thought there was you wanted to get the starter out because the middle bullpen relief wasn't as good as the back end for the starter. Well, today that's changed. <laughs> Middle relief is really good. They're all throwing 98. Yeah, it's it, it's amazing going from game to game, and you're in the fifth inning, and it's how do I pronounce this guy's name? And he's throwing how hard? Yeah, I mean it, it's truly amazing. One and two. Hap at first. Another throw. Speaking of hard throwers. Carlos Sombrano threw out the first pitch today. Clark. Is Clark ice in his hand down? <laughs> I have Clark's number. I'm going to text Clark and just see if he's all right. <laughs> Two outs man at first. One nothing Giants. And belly spoils that one. But see, by being able to do things like that, you you have long at bats. And, and the pitchers per play appearance, I think, mean something still. The long at bat usually means that you're going to get a mistake somewhere. Instead of chasing or swinging in a bad pitch and making it out. Foul back. Here's Big Z pregame. Kind of that three quarter arm slot. Ran it up and in on a hitter. It's not surprising. One and two on Bellinger. Inside now two and two. Sixth in the majors in batting average, eighth in slugs, seventh in OPS. He's been one of the best players in the game. A little bit high, that is a good eye. Yeah, and that's a pitch sometimes that does give him in trouble, gets him in trouble. When he chases, it's usually up in the zone. Really good job of laying off that pitch. And it's a pitch the last couple of years that if he did swing at it in contact, he had trouble keeping his barrel on plane. He feels like with his shoulder healthy, that right front shoulder, and he's stronger, a good 15, 17 pounds stronger, feels like he's able to get to those pitches at least a bit more consistently and keep the barrel level. The 3 2. Down and in, a check swing. That's a heck of a plate appearance. Cody Bellinger draws the walk, so back to back walks with two out. And it'll bring up Dansby Swanson. Well, you think about it, he went from 0 2 to 4 2. I mean, he was ahead of him in the count, and he didn't swing and he didn't chase. And he's going to bring a visit from Andrew Bailey. He might be trying to get, I think they're going to bring a left hander in eventually here. And I think that's why you saw David Ross probably DH Michael Talkman if he wanted to switch it out. Andrew Bailey out there, Andy Green going through what the expectation is going forward. I mean, it's one of those things 
you don't get to settle in, right? It, it's you're managing right from jump because there's moves and counter moves and line changes, as they like to say from time to time. It's like the first inning turns into the seventh inning right away, and you got to do it for nine innings. Yeah. There's Swanson now, Dansby, who had the RBI double late. I mean, if there was ever a team to to do that a bullpen game it's against San Francisco because they like to switch out so quickly. I mean they're all about platoon so. You look at their lineup today they have six left handed hitters right you start right handed bringing a left hand is Gabe going to switch. The one oh. Yeah, that's outside. Well look they've made him work right he got the first two guys. On. Seven pitches, and then the next two made him throw 15. Add on two more. Yeah, I'm sure Gabe was probably trying to, hoping to get him through Suzuki. He may not be able to now. Yeah, there's a pitch for a strike, a sinker at 94, and it's two and one on Swanson. Walker, the 27 year old, who pitches college ball at Washington State. That clips the corner for a strike. Dansby didn't like the call and lets Jansen Visconti know it. Yeah, he has that comeback, but I think it was a little bit late getting back to the plate. Let's see. No, it's a strike. Yeah, that cannot be fun for a right. Half at second, Bellinger at first, Cubs down a run. Dansby hits that one to center. Charging in, Meckler dives and he makes the catch. Swanson lines out to center and it stays a one nothing Giants lead a reminder during the second fourth and sixth innings of tonight's game go to Marquee Plus on our app for a unique gaming broadcast presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Max Spiegel Danny Parkins and Lance Brozdowski will be on the call. Hey check out the school night special offer. In addition to tickets fans purchasing through this offer receive one regular hot dog and non alec alcoholic beverage to purchase visit cubs.com slash school night special. Let's the music right there. Blake Sable at the plate the catcher the Giants took him in the rule five draft from the Pirates. He's caught he's played some outfield. Guy was drafted out of USC. 2019 seventh round pick by Pittsburgh. Yeah, they have two young catchers, 25 years old, 24 years old. He gives them a little bit of option because he can play some left field. He's not as defensive as, ba as Bailey. I mean, that's a high bar. He's looks like he's turning into one of the better in the game. It's, Hendricks throws a nasty changeup, first strikeout, one away. Yeah, this is a beautiful changeup. It starts as a strike, and all of a sudden it dives out of the zone. And that's what he is so good at doing. And that's why he's used this changeup more and more because I think as the season has went along, he's got a better and better feel. JD Davis now. Hendricks winds and delivers. You know, I think he's this in is an interesting matchup because JD Davis likes to hit the ball the other way. And to hit Kyle Hendricks to me, you have to stay back because he'll eat you up with that changeup. You have to think right center. Foul back. Davis, who got off to such a good start, his second half, it's been rough. Just 185 since the break and the slug at 295. I wonder a tiny bit. He's got 487 plate appearances, most he has ever had. Just wonder a little if he's wearing down. I'm sure. He would love to subscribe to that theory because they all want to be out there. But you know, Boog, I think it takes a special mentality and physicality to play every day. And not every player is meant to do that. And it might be the case where this is more at bats than he's used to getting, and he's just wearing down. Oh two. Get on his hands. Dansby Swanson, a guy. It just has that everyday mentality. 
Nico Horner brings it as well. Ian Happ has brought it this season. Bellinger brings it. You know, he's sat out because of injuries, yep. but he brings it. 0 2 to Davis. The other way, and a base hit past the diving Nico Horner. Well, you called it. You need to go the other way, and that one muffed briefly. And Davis sprints to second. It should go single and then E8. Yeah, it looks like he's trying to throw the sinker in and he leaves it out over the plate. And J.D. Davis does a wonderful job just driving this ball by Nico Horner. just gets by and sometimes the ball snakes. You see the little hop that it took, that little higher hop that it took? You know, it's supposed to hug to the ground. It didn't. And that's what got Cody Bellinger. Here's Brandon Crawford now. Crawford. The strike. Interesting Crawford all BP was trying to hit the ball to left center today. And it's been a real struggle for him this year. He's been hurt. He's had knee problems arm problems. On the ground Horner. Gobbles it up. And throws out the veteran two away and on the play Davis. Down to third Giants lead it one nothing got that run on the first pitch of the game. Lamont Wade Jr. with a solo homer. By the way, for Kyle Hendricks, it's just the sixth time he's allowed a hit on the first pitch of a game. Look, I think that would speak to his command. You know, he throws quality pitches most of the time. Here's Meckler now. Wade Meckler, who was drafted last year, eighth round pick out of Oregon State 2022, 92 games in the minors. And over last year and this year, hit 377. So they brought him up. He debuted August 14th, and he's got a good mustache. So if he hit 377 in those two years you're telling me he had a bad year last year because he hit 379 this year in the minors. It must have been about 375 last year. <laughs> two and one the count. Fouled off. On base guy a really good bunter. Take, he'll take it with him. Towards first base. Davis the runner at third two outs Giants lead one zip. Two two. Oh. Everybody moving Candelario Horner Suzuki. Yeah I think this ball's just off the plate. Yeah. Nice job of trying to sell it Jan Gomes and all the infielders. But we get that view of watch the, everybody once got it. Come on in. No. That one flared Swanson can't get it. And it finds space in left field. Man. Meckler dunks one in. And the Giants lead 2 0. Yeah, this is how you get rewarded for just putting the ball in play. You know, so many guys have, have tried to start putting the ball in play more, and he gets jammed really bad. And because Dansby's playing up the middle, expecting him to pull the ball to the ground, he's just able to get it above and over his head. You know one thing I noticed against Cincinnati that I thought Kyle did a better job of I, I know it was Milwaukee was holding runners. I thought he actually incorporated a little bit of a slide step because runners have had their way 19 for 21 and stolen bases off of him. Eckler does not have a stolen base. It was only six for ten in the minor leagues which was kind of shocking to me. Center fielder. Run. Yeah. You know one thing that he does is kind of interesting is you, you see he doesn't have his glasses on now. He hits with his glasses on. And then when he gets the first or second he takes them off. And gives them to Antoine Richardson. 
Well, the bases have gotten bigger, Joe. Yeah, he doesn't need him to see. Hendricks handles the chance. The Giants, however, add a run. We're midway in the second, 2 nothing. And their families rode home to serve thousands of veterans, active duty service members, and families across the U.S. If you or a loved one are in need of treatment, please reach out for health care and wellness services. Learn more about Russia's life-changing services at roadholdprogram.org. Thanks to United States Marine Corps Sergeant Carlos Nunez for his service. Thanks to all of you for recognizing him. And Sergeant Nunez, thank you for being a Cub fan. Here at Wrigley, turned out to be a nice night. And Seiya Suzuki making his way to the play, time down for Bounty quick stats. They're just quick, but you're looking at a Seiya Suzuki that is swung more aggressively. He has struck out less since August 1st. The slug is just under 700, but swinging a lot more frequently, especially in the zone, and it's cut his strikeout rate. Boog, those are Hall of Fame numbers right there. If you do that your whole career, when you look at that slug and the strikeout rate. Say has looked excellent. On the ground, left side, Davis Fields, and throws the first. One up, one down. Downstairs and Taylor. Well, guys, I was asking Saya last night if he feels like this is the most consistent stretch of baseball that he's ever played in the major leagues. Because remember, when he first came over last year, he got off to a nice tear and he said, I'm not to the point where I'm ready to reflect yet. He said, I'm so far from being satisfied. And he pointed to the fact that he feels like he's not been good with runners in scoring position. So he likes what he's been doing as of late, but still feels like there's a lot left in the tank. Yeah, 446 plate appearances last year, only 111 games. He's right in that range, a little past that. Remember, he had injuries last season. What was that? <laughs> he could have stopped. He didn't have to finish the pitch. Looked like he caught a spike. And all of a sudden, a cricket game breaks out. Oh. He was trying to rob men. Remember that? Yeah. On the ground, softly hit Estrada. Yeah, there are two outs. Yeah, so for Seiya Suzuki, still, he doesn't seem totally comfortable. Taylor used the phrase reflecting, and it seems as much. He, he seems more comfortable, at least right now, deflecting and making jokes. He's not ready to talk about this is what's been better and speak in, I don't know, more concrete terms about the success he's had. First all pitch in for a strike to Gomes. All I could think about is don't reflect. See ball and hit ball. Keep sure. it simple. I mean, it's like he simplified it. He's just attacking balls in the zone. I think he was thinking too much about the breaking ball in the beginning of the year. And that one hit in the air down the line. Fair ball. Over to pick that one up is Jack Peterson. Big turn. For Gomes, but he'll stay put. Jan yesterday with a couple of hits, and then his one out, he hit 109 miles an hour, a ground ball, so he continues to swing it well. Yeah, I give him credit for hitting this ball. This is a sweeping slider that he's able to pull. He doesn't get all of it, hits it off the end a little bit. Maybe it broke his back. I think he did, yeah. Yeah, but Jock Peterson did a nice job of getting to it and keeping him to a single. Is Jock rocking an orange glove? <laughs> orange? <laughs> Love and the spikes. Can't confirm. Well, he's color coordinated. Yeah. Magical fouls one away. And it's nothing in two. A reminder coming up in the top of the third. Get a chance to chat with Cody Bellinger as he patrols center field. Two nothing Giants. John Chambi. Joe Girardi and Taylor McGregor.
Dick. Swing did not go. That's Carlos Torres on the call down there at first. Did uh, Nick do a little um, check at your point to the umpire? Yeah. He did. Miguel Cabrera style? It is. Here's a 1 2. And Madrigal fouls it away. For Dick Madrigal, the one thing he's done well this year, he's hit the fastball. 329 on fastballs. Look, he's a guy that's going to hit it on the ground, but the ground ball rate is down, so you're seeing a few more balls hit hard in the air. That spoils that one. One and two. Luke, I was talking about it before. You know, the Cubs don't have that monstrous slugger or two monstrous slugger. But you think about what Madrigal has done in the ninth slot. When he's hit ninth, he said 288. I mean, that's with a 341 on base, that's above league average. Yeah. He's done a really good job. And his defense has been really good at third base. Time call. Ball and two strikes on Madrigal. Two outs, man at first. Giants two, Cubs nothing. Walker deals. Slice the other way. Fair ball. Yastrzemski picks it up, Gomes to third, and they're at the corners. And now Mike Tuckman will make his way to the plate. So the Cubs with a threat with two outs. Yeah, he has such great bat-to-ball skills. I mean, this isn't even a strike, and he's able to pull his hands in on this fastball that's up in the zone and hit it the other way and get Jan Gomes to third. And that's important because Jan doesn't run extremely well on, on gentle to the catchers. And it'll be a little easier to score on a hit, and it also opens the hole between first and second for Mike Tuckman. We get a pitching change here at Wrigley. So Ryan Walker is done. Giants lead 2-0. Pitching change brought to you by Lakeside Bank. Lakeside Bank, it's about time. Brought to you by your local Hyundai dealer. Find the dealer nearest you at buyhyundai.com. Buy Advocate Healthcare. Let's live well and make the most of every moment, game day, and every day. And by Wintrust, proud legacy partner of the Chicago Cubs and exclusive home of Cubs checking. Pickleball, sport of the future. I have a racket. Playing it out on Gallagher Way pregame. Giants lead 2 0. John Chambi, Joe Girardi. And we get a pitching change. The pitcher will be Scott Alexander, the sinker balling left hander. Yeah, you look at the strikeout rate, it's not very good. It's in the bottom 3% in Major League Baseball. The ERA is high innings. He can give him multiple innings, but he's more of a situational guy than the other guys. Gets a lot of ground balls with that sinker. Sinker slider change, kind of what you expect from most left handers. 92 93 on this sinker. And how about this? You hear the music, and so you know. <laughs> Whitney Houston meets Patrick Wisdom's coming to the plate. He's going to try and dance with this singer, this sinker, and maybe put it on to Waveland. So the moves are being made here in the early going. David Ross pinch hits for Mike Tockman. Lake Sable calls time. Buttons as the Giants go to the pen. Wisdom on the ground, just foul of third. Patrick has not gotten a chance to play a ton of late. I mean, you're talking about since the beginning of August, I think he even has 30 plate appearances. Pitch outside. He's got 25 plate appearances since the beginning of August. I, I'm sure David Ross prepared him for this today and probably said, "Hey, look, second time around, if they bring in a lefty and it means something, I'm going to hit. I'm going to hit you. So be ready." I'm sure he was in the cage getting ready, looking at Alexander stuff. The one-one popped him up right side. Estrada dealing with the win makes the catch. Yeah, the Cubs.
leave a couple. We'll head to the third. Cody Bellinger will join us. Mic'd up. Giants lead 2 0. John Chompy, Joe Girardi, Taylor McGregor, and checking his defensive part in center field is Cody Bellinger. What's happening? You know, rough time of day for the for a high fly ball, so let's keep it under the lights. So just the sky is difficult right now. Yeah, but. And do you have pitch come in? Yeah, but I'm turning it down. Okay. So uh, there's a lot going on in my there's ear. There's a lot <laughs> happening. A lot going oh, on. Boy. Kyle Hendricks will get to work against Lamont Wade Jr. What's it like playing defense behind Kyle Hendricks? Um, it's fun. Uh, it's quick. And it really is. He's kind of like an artist. That's how I describe it. Popped up right side. Corner and Candelario. And Nico falls off the bigger guy. I like that. The little guy posts up the big guy. That's called pop-up priority, Boo. I get it. He's kind of—I yeah. I just got like an artist. He's like it's just fun to watch, you know. Um, knows he's really intelligent and uh, knows what he's doing up there. How much have you connected with the fans out there? A lot. It's—it's it's a great place to play center field. It's a great place to play outfield. They—they're right on top of you, and you know, they'll let you know when you mess up, like I did on that ground ball. How advantageous is pitch count for, for a center fielder, knowing what's coming? Um, I'm, I'm, uh. Near the year left field, half back near the back. wall, and it's over the wall and gone. In and out of the basket, but it's a home run, and Yastrzemski will touch them all. It just snuck over, and now it's 3-0. Probably a little aided by the wind. It's another ball that's up in the zone. Yeah, a lot of wind today. Yeah, a lot of wind and anything going out to left, left center, center field is probably going to be helped by the wind. Anything going to right is going to be hurt. It. I'm kind of, I'm kind of indecisive. I'm not indecisive, but the pitch com is just, just you just got to put it in your hat. It always falls out. It's never, just never stays in your hat. Do you like knowing what's coming? Um, like I just like. For me, it's just all about location. Even in center field, before you're like in out, just kind of don't really think about the pitch all that much. Just try to get the best like first step you can get. First, first, you know, good first step. This is this is, this is good. There's a lot going on. Yeah, there is. A lot going on. The O2. Swing and a miss, struck him out. Flores is gone. Taylor McGregor, what do you got? Well, I think with Jock Peterson stepping up, Belly, you guys were teammates for a long time in L.A. You told me he's one of your favorite teammates of all time. What does this guy mean to you? Well, I don't think, I don't know whether Cody could hear. Oh, but, no, I couldn't hear anything. So Jock Peterson, as your, your former teammate, Oh, right at you. <laughs> Close play at second. That was hit hard by Peterson. Well, better, better throw. I would have got him. The wall. Did the wind mess with that belly? No. It's too low for that one. It's it's a line drive off the wall. Maybe if the wind's howling in, yep. it might affect it a little bit, but that ball was hit really hard. Yeah, Cody, I don't think you, even if you make a good throw, you get him because I think he slides if yeah. it's a good throw, yeah. So Young, Don't be young, so hard on yourself. Young, young Jock with the wheels. <laughs> he was a 30-30 guy in the minors. Oh yeah. I was. Uh, he was in AAA. I was in high A. I think hearing all about him. Came up, had a lot of good years. Got him. Oof. 
that at? It's down a little bit. Arcade zone had it down. Didn't look, didn't look low from here. Chance of Visconti are played on fire. So down 3 0. Man at second. Two down. Here it comes. And that is in for a strike. You still keep in touch with Jack Peterson? Yeah, I do. Quite a bit. Saw him today before the game. Nice catch up. Haven't seen him in person in a while, so it's always good to see him. Alex Wood over there as well. Always good to see former teammates. Swing and a miss, and now it's three and two. How hard is it out there being mindful that this is the one park where you have a brick wall behind you? Yeah, you definitely know that. Um, <laughs> it's a bigger warning track as well, so. Ah. Got him. Swing and a miss. Got him. Got him. Nasty changeup. Nasty changeup. Cody Bellinger, play-by-play -play man and center fielder. Good stuff. Thank you. Yes, you guys. You got it. Belly on the mic. We're midway to the third, and the Giants lead at three zip. It's like they might have changed catchers. Patrick Bailey behind the plate. No. No. I the umpire was pointing at somebody like there was a move and I didn't see any moves. So Horner at the plate against the lefty Scott Alexander. Horner half Bellinger comes down three nothing. Fouled off the leg of Nico Horner. Nico struck out looking his first time. Those are the overall numbers for Horner. Second half, he's hit 290 with a 370 on base. So we've seen walks be more of a factor for him. We're wondering, major league average for on base percentage sits at 320. Last year, on base percentage was 312. That was what the league average was. And that was the lowest since 1972. So do you attribute that to the shift or the non shifts. I mean some of it has to be because batting average is a tick up it's up six points from more for lefties than righties. Yeah, 243 to 249. On the ground to third backhanded Davis. Safe at first. Nico beats it out. And a good start here to the third. Yeah, it looks like J.D. Davis does a nice job of getting to this ball, but just takes a little bit too much time. I mean, the interesting thing about San Francisco, he doesn't make a clean exchange, is a lot of their guys are above average with, with outs, but they make a lot of errors. And, and to me, that was just... A bobbled exchange that allowed Nico to beat it. First one to Hap is in for a strike. Might need that glove, Boog. Yeah. I mean, that's the second time he's gotten handcuffed in this game. Sable back there. As Ian Happ gets right handed for the first time tonight. The 1 1. Foul off the plate. I've been really impressed by Ian Happ's second half. The average. Is the same first half to the second half, but the slug has been so much different. The home runs have been different. He's been more productive as a hitter. He has not been on base as much, but I like this Ian Happ better. The more productive, the RBIs, the run scored, the home runs. The one two. It's way outside. This is more of a damage Ian Happ instead of a leadoff Ian. See the difference in the slug. I mean, that's a substantial amount. Well, he's got almost as many extra base hits in 
a little more than half the games. 2 2. Swing and a miss, and Alexander gets him. And a strikeout means there's one away. And here comes Cody Bellinger. Thanks to Belly for being mic'd up. Social scene brought to you by Miller Light. Luca saying, Belly, the funniest dude. I'd pay money just to listen to him talk to himself and setter for a game. Yeah, I got the feeling that whether he's mic'd up or not, he's out in center field going, got him. Oh, yeah, definitely. That's that's who he is. I, I, I'm thinking, like, you know, you have Rossi interview on Fridays, is it? Yeah. Belly could have a segment. <laughs> Just mic'd up. Just I mean, mic'd I, up once a week. I felt sort of superfluous to the whole thing. He, yeah, he's he's entertaining. He's been really entertaining when he's been in the box too. Not only in center field but when he's at the plate he's been really entertaining this year. Tell you one of the things that jumps out the consistency. When you consider. He came back from the I.L. on June 15th. He has had back to back hitless starts. Twice. Yeah, I mean that's amazing. You know, there was a there was a time period when I was looking at his numbers. Okay, for 15 games, he's been doing this. For 20 games, he's been doing. I stopped looking because it's been for 70 games. I drive center field. It's a base hit, and the hits just keep on coming for Cody. And, and to me, that's the biggest difference that he has now a couple different swings in his bag. And and you talk about it where he just takes his lower half out of it because he's stronger. He just uses his hands and he's able to cover the whole plate and hit this ball through. You see how flat the bat is through the zone? And it looks like they're going to make a pitching change and probably bring in a right hander. But that's the difference in Cody Ballinger. He knows when to go for it and he knows when I just need to get a hit. Gabe Kapler makes the point to the pen. Jacob Junis coming on. Pitching change brought to you by Lakeside Bank. Lakeside Bank, it's about time. Nice single right over the head of the Giants infielders. He can do so many good things offensively. And I was talking to Cubs hitting coach Dustin Kelly, and I asked him, what impresses you the most about what Cody Bellinger can do offensively? And he said, the best hitters have multiple clubs in their bag. And he said, my favorite club of Cody's is with two strikes, his ability to pull out what he calls his seven iron. And basically, it's exactly what we just saw with two strikes. It's a line drive right over the head of the infielders, but before the outfielders. He said that is so hard to do, and he does it consistently. Well, I think it speaks to his hand-eye coordination. Really, it's it's outstanding. And there was a question about that because, you know, in the last few years, he's been fighting that shoulder injury, and there was a lot of swing and miss. As you can see, there's a lot of hand-eye and the ability to make contact and get base hits as well. Jacob Junis now 37th appearance you see he's taken down 76 and two thirds innings a big strikeout rate and yeah, the pitch in for a strike so an opportunity here with runners at first and second at one out yeah, that two strike approach has really paid dividends for Cody Bellinger. In the air, center field, dropping, dropping, it falls for a hit. And around third and on his way to the plate is Nico Horner. Good read, good send by Willie Harris. Dansby basically hit a changeup. Not the pitch, but the swing, a changeup off the bat. Well, he got robbed in the first inning where he lined out pretty hard to Meckler. This one he hits off the end. It looks like it's a little slider cutter that he hits off the end. And this is an amazing job of base running by Nico Horner, understanding that he's not going to get to this ball and score. I mean, out one of the better base runners in, in the big leagues, and he showed it right there. Three hits in the inning. None of them have been hard hit. Helps five hits in the game. None of them have been hard hit. Say Suzuki's been hitting the ball hard of late. And the pitch delivered outside. Ball one. You know, you talked about they have two starters. And then, you know, they're kind of at three. Junis threw four innings the other day on Thursday, went 58 pitches. He's one of the ball guards. He's kind of like a starter. 
Up the middle, and Estrada on the backhand. Will toss to Crawford, it'll be a single. An infield hit, everybody's safe, and they're loaded. Well placed. Yeah, Junis, I think, thought that the infield was going to get to this, so he let this ball go. He could have fielded this ball. He just kind of let it go, and it's hit in the perfect spot. Crawford's kind of playing him to pull. Estrada's not able to get there, and he just kind of pulled his hand back. You know, maybe he's used to the shift from last year, and the, and the second baseman's usually on that side, but they're not able to get there. Now the Cubs could have a big inning. This one to Candelario misses. It's a slider. That's the pitch Judas likes to throw. He's a slider monster. 63.3 percent of the time. Bellinger at third. Swanson at second. Suzuki is at first, and it's 2-0. So, what percentage makes you a monster? Like, is Kyle a changeup monster? Is it over 50? I think over 50 percent okay. makes you a monster. But I'll get back to you and I think it's a very fair question. Three balls no strikes and there's no place to put them. This has been the Cubs in the second half down three nothing. No problem fight and fight and fight. Crowd on its feet three and all bases loaded. Ball four and he walked in a run three two. Since the 18th of July the only team with a better record in baseball the Dodgers. Cubs 31 and 14 they've gotten within a run here and it brings Andrew Bailey out. I wish we had a Fitbit on Bailey and Kapler and comboed it up because those guys are getting their steps in. A lot of gum chewing going on too, but I think you see that in managers this time of year. Rossi's, I think, going with the seeds right now. See what the Dodgers. Seattle has been amazing as well. Yeah, they've made four trips to the mound, and we're in the third. Any of these guys are going to try and catch the second half of the Pearl Jam concert. I'm sure, Eddie Vedder will try and delay it a little bit for guys on the team. But we got day game after night game booth. Eddie Vedder tomorrow night. <laughs> You're not buying that. Line drive left field. It's a base hit. It gets past Jock. It'll score two. Candelario will stop at third. Jan Gomes a bullet into left center field. And just like that, the Cubs lead it 4 3. Hanger, 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 slaughter. Thigh high out over the plate. And Jan Gomes drives this ball in the left center gap. Jock Peterson is not able to get it. He dies for it, tips off his glove, and ends up going to the fence. You hear the loud sound. He had two hits last night with an RBI, a double last night. And this double is brought to you by Elgin Hyundai, home of the 20-year, 200,000-mile warranty on every new car. You know, Coop pointed out last inning, the Madrigal got a hit. The Cubs, eighth and ninth hitters, have 231 hits this year, which is third in the National League. Next pitch in for a strike and that quickly it's nothing in two infield in for the Giants with runners at second and third and one out. Yeah that. Combo of Gomes and Madrigal eight nine last night eight nine tonight. Well here tonight. Those guys are three for three. On the ground to third and they're coming home with it and the throw the tag out. So the bouncer to third and contact play on Christopher Morell will hit here.
We're in the third inning. It's the third different guy to hit in the leadoff spot <laughs> for the Cubs. We have one extra guy because of the two September call-ups. Yep. One of them is a pitcher, one's a position player. I would think you'd see Christopher probably throughout the rest of this game. Junis fires. That foul back at our Ooh, boo. that was close boo. general vicinity. That was more on my side. Yeah, it was. I didn't move though. Well, you got to save me. Well, I, but it wasn't on your side. That's why I didn't get up. Okay. Think about how this inning started. A little fumbled exchange on a ground ball to J.D. Davis. Yep. And Nico Horner playing hard beats it out. Ball to strike on Morrell. Christopher at 247. 19 homers. Big hit in the inning. Jan Gomes a two run double. Popped up a mile high. Davis dealing with the wind and makes the catch in fair territory. They send nine to the plate and the Cubs score four times. On to the fourth and the Cubs have a one run lead. Said in his post game interview yesterday, this was my best start ever. What an outing it was. Steele dominated, went eight, gave up two hits, struck out a dozen. David Ross said, quote, he attacked the strike zone. The secondary stuff was really nice. You go that deep in the game, you're bound to with his stuff, get some extra punch outs. What a memorable performance for Justin Steele, who joins us now. Great work yesterday. How much fun was that? It was a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, it was definitely uh, my, the best outing in my professional career so far. And it, was just, it was just really cool to be out there doing it. I know that it doesn't always work this way, but it seemed like you told Taylor, and then we were just talking off the air. You got into the bullpen and you felt like, okay, I feel sharp, huh? Yeah, I mean, it was a nice hot day. Didn't take me many throws to get loose warming up and stuff. And then I uh, got in the bullpen, got some off the mound, and, and you know, it didn't take me many. I, I was loose, realized I had my stuff, and at that point for me, I just don't want to waste bullets. I tell you what I thought was really effective, Justin, was your fastball away to the right-handed hitters. It was almost like everybody was looking in, looking in, looking in. And you got a number of strikeouts on it. I mean, was that part of the plan, or was it something you guys picked up during the game? Yeah, they uh, they have some guys in their lineup that do a good job of bringing their hands at righties that do a good job of bringing their hands into the inside fastball. So I would go in with it, you know, get them swinging at it, and then you know, being able to uh, backdoor it or throw the one that kind of gets above their barrel, you know, using it on both sides, you know, quite important, you know, especially when you got guys that are able to get to the inside pitch. I know you'll always take the runs, Kyle just waited 22 minutes for you is it a big deal when the offense is out there and you have to wait that extra time um I think it depends if it's really hot you know you kind of want a little breather in between uh, innings you don't want to be out there five minutes after you just got done you know so if it's hot you know you'd like a little in water in you but other than that I wouldn't say it really affects me or anything. Hendricks with a count one and two. Brandy Crawford, the veteran at the plate, and here it comes. Up the middle, oh. harder diving play. Nico wow. gets up, and he steals a hit from Crawford. And Justin Steele loving it. He's incredible. Yeah, they they both are up the middle. What a, what what a pleasure to have these guys in the defense they play. A really good read by Nico. He gets up quickly and understands that he has time and makes an accurate throw and. Candelaria has a nice stretch. I mean, that's big. And you know what? My, my question for you is you talked about your best start was yesterday. My favorite start of the year was the start against Milwaukee. How through a lot of pitches, first inning, a line drive off your leg in the second inning, and how you gutted through that. How did that line drive? And this had to hurt. I mean, this, I was amazed that you stayed in the game. I mean, that's a loud noise. Yeah, right? yeah. I mean, I stopped it in its tracks, you know. Uh, <laughs> complete redirection. Um, yeah, it was like 100 miles an hour or something. It didn't feel good, um, especially when I first tried to put pressure back on it. But like once I got it moving around, I was fine. I was able to keep pitching and stuff, and you know, I was able to go deeper into the ball game and stuff, which was huge. How did it affect your work during the week? 
in preparation for yesterday's start and how much did the extra day help. I mean I think if you ask any pitcher it's uh, the extra day always helps you feel a little fresher. Um, but as far as preparation and stuff my leg really didn't didn't affect too much. I was doing a lot of treatment modality stuff to you know get the swell, swelling out of there and stuff. So you just got to take care of you still got a mark. Oh yeah, it's still purple. It's, it's really purple. With Rob Manfred's signature on it. <laughs> yeah. Steely, thank you. Congratulations. Great work yesterday. Thank y'all. Have a good one. Justin Steele right there. The Cubs. Kyle Hendricks looking sharp and getting some help. As good a middle defense as you'll find in baseball. Horner and Swanson. Nico, a great play. It's 4-3. Illinois can purchase Cubs Charities 50-50 raffle tickets starting at 11 a.m. through the end of each game at Cubs.com slash raffle or from a raffle ambassador at Wrigley Field through the eighth inning. Go Horner here against Jacob Junis. Pitch a changeup missing inside. <laughs> Crooked number for the Cubs. 17 innings of four more runs since the break. Tied for second most. Horner puts a charge into this one. Out to right. And Yastrzemski makes the catch just shy of the track. When you need to get the job done, leave it to the pros. Angie has the lineup you need to win big at home. Connect with skilled professionals to get all your home projects done well. Boog, I just got to know, does the four constitute a fat crooked number? I'm going to have to check with J.D. I'm going to I'm going to say probably not. It's got to have a little roundness to it, like a five, five or a six. Five or six. Five and above. I mean, obviously, snowman is what you're <laughs> looking for. Right? That's fat. Well, they had the picket fence going, and Hendricks put a stop to that. Yeah. One, one, one. It's only the second time in his career he's allowed a run in each of the first three innings in a start. That's pretty wild, his entire career. So, Junis on here. Look, I don't know if I've ever seen three different leadoff hitters in the first three innings of a game. That takes inside, and now it's three and two in a walk and a strikeout. Swing and a miss. Hap is gone. And so two away. Time to play mound ball presented by Tasty Trade. If the ball stays on the mound, Cup season ticket holder Bob Fusad will win $1,000 in the Tasty Trade jackpot, and he won. Congrats to Bob for winning tonight's edition of Mound Ball presented by Tasty Trade. Stocks, options, futures, crypto. Nobody plays mound ball like Bob Fusad. Right side, Wade, Junis. And Bellinger retired. A quick one, two, three inning for Jacob Junis. Having a McNugget on a drone. A McDonald's McNugget of the game. All right, playoff odds for the Cubs on baseball reference June 9th, 10.7% chance. Fangraph 7.1. Today, it's at 89.8 and 83.6. Pretty amazing, the shift. You're talking about. It really started in San Francisco. It started that Friday game. Kyle pitched the Saturday game, which, by the way, his best start of the year. He was phenomenal. Eight innings, one hit, no runs. He had a no hitter until two outs in the eighth, the double by Hanniger. But they took the first two of that series, and that's. That's been the springboard. And that's just foul. Rod Culpa down the third baseline. Tyro Estrada and Lamont Wade Jr. and then Mike Yastrzemski. The Cubs down 3 0 early, rallied for four in the third and lead it 4 3. We're in the top of the fifth. 
Ukshambi Joe Girardi with you. Hendrick Steals. Popped up. Nico wandering out. Makes the call and the grab. Hey, Cub fans, go to marqueesportsnetwork.com for the latest Cubs news and in depth feature stories. Presented by Jeff Vukovic, your local nationwide insurance agent. Visit jeffvuk.com. Nationwide is on your side. One down, and here is Lamont Wade Jr. Yeah, the pitch outside. He homered on the first pitch of the game. And for Wade, his 14th homer of the season. Kyle Wines delivers. And now it's 2 0. Wade with a really good idea of the strike zone. Originally drafted by the Twins. He came over. In 2021, in a trade from Minnesota, to play first and outfield, the 2-1, and that's low. Yeah, this is one of the uh, matchups I was curious to watch because you look at Kyle Hendricks; he's so good at just throwing balls just off the plate, but Wade doesn't chase. He's in the top four percent when it comes to not chasing. Popped up right side. Corner. Nico's been busy. And he makes a one handed catch. Time now for our Nissan breakdown and take a look at the improvements the Cubs have made defensively. You look at advanced metrics like outs above average, defensive runs saved, or even just percentage of ground balls turned into outs. Last year, 27th, they've improved to 7th. Defensive runs saved, 21st to 3rd. And they turn the second highest rate of ground balls into outs in the majors. And a lot of that has to do with the addition of Dansby Swanson and how strong they are up the middle. Cody Bellinger. Let me give a little love to Nick Madrigal. I mean, he's been outstanding at third base. The offseason, Madrigal was out in Arizona. Andy Green went from his home in Nashville went out to Arizona and worked a couple of weeks with Nick Madrigal and came back and said yeah this will work and he's gotten better and better and there's no question that the rate at which he is improved is I think even a little surprising yeah that's a credit to how hard Nick works but also to Andy Green and in, in, in the belief that they have in him always helps. And again, a position he played, he told me, one inning at a showcase once in his life. Middle infield guy, mainly second base. So that's our Nissan breakdown. Nissan makes cars the thrill. Experience the thrill yourself today. Shop NissanUSA.com. The one two. Now it's even two balls and two strikes. Uh, Mike Yastrzemski. Yastrzemski. Just recently off the IL. They still without Michael Conforto. That's pitch in the dirt. He's been on the IL three times with his left hamstring. That, that's concerning because of the scar tissue that builds up and is he susceptible the rest of his career to pulls. Three balls, two strikes. Here it comes. Little bouncer right side Candelario to Kyle steps on the bag and they get Yastrzemski one two three Hendricks gets the Giants we're midway in the fifth and the Cubs have a one run lead. Our fan do a live bet same game parlay Cliff where are you leaning man. I'm going under 12 and a half runs All right. for the game. I like it. Jamie to get a knock. It's time for it is time for you to do something. I'm glad someone finally Get recognized off. that. We'll catch you on Cubs Post Game Live talking about a Cubs win. Guys. Cliffy, don't let him do you like that. Cliffy, Cliffy had a better outfit than Cole. He outdid him today. I like the shoes better. He's getting after his shoes. That's a quality baby. 
Dansby Swanson will step to the plate. Cuffs lead it by a run. They trailed 3 0. It'll be Swanson, Suzuki, and Candelario against Junis. I'm sure JD's watching tonight. I just want to point out that Jan Gomes yelled to Kyle Hendricks last inning to get over. And Kyle got over to first. I know JD loves that. I think I'm on JD's side on that one. Yeah. You got some funny sides, though. It's fair Boo. enough. It's fair. Yeah. Well, like you want a good example, man. Yeah, so here, watch. Here you go. Just listen. You hear it? There it is. And look how good he got over there, Boo. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> Never would have gotten over. It's called a friendly reminder. Right, I get it. Ouch. Looks like it went off the top of his, his shin guard. Probably got a little bit of the leg. Those are things that I don't miss about playing boot. Those bruises that yeah. you got from foul tips. Sinker ballers get you more than than four seam guys because the guys hit over the top of it and it goes straight down. Ouch. It seems like the pad is never where it's supposed to be either. Well, he was down on his knee, so I think that got him. Yeah. On the if he was leg. in a traditional stance, he wouldn't have got hit. So there. Wow. Ball at two strikes. Swanson waits. Here comes. Outside. Slider from Junis. You mentioned he throws that pitch a little over 63% of the time. Nobody on, nobody out. 2 2. Let's go, favor. Watson fouls it back. Dansby, an RBI single and a run scored. He's also lined to center. JD reach out. Oh, JD reached out. I think he would have got there, he said. He was on his way. Inside and Swanson spins out of the way. And now it's three and two. I didn't expect such a quick response. <laughs> this is a, a, a chaser, Boog. It's that sinker that just keeps running in. I don't know. Did it nip that little pad? Ah. Kind of hard to lean out over the plate after that one. Oh boy, Swanson can't believe it. And turns around to Jansen Visconti to say, I don't agree with the call. Yeah, I'm curious to see where this ends up in the K zone. It looked like it was up, but maybe not. No, it just gets just that corner. got a piece of it. Yeah, it's a good call. As a hitter, you don't like it. I once told Frank Poli on a pitch that was a perfect pitch in the outside corner to me, Frank Poli, a long time umpire. I said, How can you call it if I can't hit it? And he, he said, Point well taken. <laughs> Suzuki fouls one away, and the count wanted one on Say. An infield single his last time up. Cubs about hit the Giants 7 5, lead it 4 3. Two balls and a strike. Suzuki's been red hot since the beginning of August. Junis delivers. Interesting enough, a lot of times hitters in September, it's not their best month because, you know, there's a wear and tear during the course of a season. In his brief career, September has been his best month. His best OPS month, average. He's just getting going. Digs back in, 2-2. Two, two. He's got nine extra base hits in his last 10 games. That slugging percentage has climbed up to 450. Major league average this year is 415. Another 2-2. Two, two. Check swing. Not a pitch down and away. Did not go. And that is Carlos Torres down there. So now three and two with one out, base is empty. Yeah. 
Ripped left center field. That'll touch down and roll. It's going to bang up against the bullpen. Suzuki will cruise into second. He's got a double with one out and a man in scoring position. That was scorched. Yeah, that's not an infield hit. That's a that's a, a breaking ball. And they, and they talked about be on the fastball and you'll adjust to the breaking ball. That's exactly what he does here. And see how flat he is through the zone and how he gets extended. And that's why this ball takes off once it hits that grass. And you got to remember, grass at Wrigley Field is really thick and it doesn't always roll so well, but that ball was scorched. On the ground to the right side, Estrada takes it in on the outfield grass and slings to first, and on the play, Suzuki to third. Now, Joe Girard. Yes, sir. I'm at least going to investigate this one. Are we doing the grass is really thick at Wrigley Field from like 1984, or like you've been walking the grounds? No. You're saying it's no. still thick? Yeah. You think this is thicker grass? No, I'm not saying it's thicker. But you got to understand, I was still here in 2003. It wasn't 1984. That was 20 years ago, Joe. Yeah, but it's not 40 years ago. It was in college in 1984, Boog. I'm not that old. Fair enough. I was watching Sut. Joe, I apologize. I, we were Thank both you. watching Sut. Yeah. I had my pacifier. <laughs> okay, you're not that much younger than no, me. I know. That's a fair point. I apologize. Yeah. I made you sound old. It's not right. Here's Jan Gomes now. <laughs> By the not. way, here in the fifth, the Giants are down to two mound visits. So look out. Suzuki is at third. He's had a really good series. Four for five in the series. A couple doubles. Three RBIs. One of the leaders on this team, 36 years old, and tonight is start number 75 at catcher. His 97th game, and he hasn't played 100 since 21. Played 103. So, I'll tell you what, he's been durable, he's been productive. The ground, Crawford charges, fires on the move, and gets Gomes. Good stretch at first by Wade. Yeah, the four-time Gold Glover throws out Gomes. David Ross saying, "We're not going to look at it. No runs a hit. A man left. End of five, four, three. On fines and time now for some injury updates, beginning." With Marcus Stroman, who's down in Arizona, threw a bullpen yesterday. Cubs saying all things went well out of the bullpen, but they want to see how his body recovers before they decide the next steps. David Ross did say it's going to be a while before we see Stroman back with the big league squad. Brad Boxberger here in Chicago threw a bullpen yesterday. He's much closer to returning to the major league squad. And then Michael Fulmer, he played catch today. He is eligible to come off of the injured list on the 8th and I had reported that initially they felt like he would be able to do so when he was eligible but things have not gone as smoothly so chances are we will not see him come off on the 8th and then Brandon Hughes and Nick Birdie both throwing with the Iowa Cubs again tomorrow. Yeah they're going to need Fulmer to get on the mound obviously but look a, a number of guys and you're not sure of that group who's going to end up. It sounds like Boxberger pretty close, but down the stretch, you need as many arms as possible. Could Stroman come back and start at some point? We'll see. Will Fulmer be ready to make an impact in that bullpen? Who knows? And then are there guys at AAA that they would look to? Not sure. So. Again, I, I think that there's a decent chance that somebody from that group or maybe somebody at AAA is taking down some outs for this team in September. As Flores takes outside and now it's two and two. You know, I think Brandon Hughes would be a real welcome addition, a lefty that can get lefties out on a consistent basis and as well as right. He's had a great year last year. That knee has been a problem. Two 
balls two strikes on Flores it'll go Flores then Peterson and then Sable. One run game what else is new. <laughs> the wind to two two. Line drive fair ball down the line that one's getting into the corner as hat has it ricochet past him Flores into second and the leadoff man is in scoring position. Yeah, Wilmer Flores has always been a great fastball hitter, and he tried to run this ball in. And it's pretty far in, but it's down where he's able to drop the head of the bat on it, and it hits this hard line drive to the left field corner. It's a good thing he doesn't have very good speed because the ball gets away from Hap. Now Kyle Henders has got some work to do to get out of this inning. Here's Jack Peterson now, one for two. He whistled a double to center field his last time up. Was with the Cubs for part of 2021 before being traded to the Braves and helped Atlanta win the World Series. So he won it all back to back years. The short 2020 campaign with the Dodgers and with Cody Bellinger and then won it again in 2021. Hit right field Suzuki back and it's over his head. Flores around third and he is in to score Peterson. It's an RBI double. And it's 4-4. Yeah, this looks like he's trying to front hip a sinker and he pulls his hands in and gets the barrel of the bat to the ball. Doesn't get extended. If he gets extended, this ball would probably run a long ways, but he's so strong and able to hit it over Sayah's head. Nice effort on Sayah Suzuki. He almost gets there. Ends up being a double, but you think about going into tonight, Kyle Hendricks had had a lot of success against Flores and Peterson. They both were two for 18 going into tonight. Tell you, it underlines how strong Jack Peterson is. A bent arm swing. Yes. Hitting the ball over 100 miles an hour as opposed to really getting his arms extended. He had that, look at the left arm up against his side and bent. Yeah, he really pulls his hands in here because he understands he has to, but he hits it in between, you know, his frame, and that's why he's able to, to be so strong. He got behind it, got his left hand underneath it, and drove it over, say, his hand, head. There's Sable now, still nobody out. This is what lasted back. Hayden Wisniewski up in the pen. As Sable waves at that changeup. Really a high K rate coming into the night. Almost struck out 35% of the time. Major League average is 22%. It's a good guy to have up at this time. Struck out twice already. Hendricks ahead one and two. Here it comes. See Kyle leaning on that changeup last five starts overall. Going at 39% of the time for the year. Swing and a miss, and he got him on a changeup. Well, a much needed strikeout. He gets it. Yes. Third time. So you see what Jan Gomes is doing here. You can't relay the pitches because of pitch comp. So he's acting like he's given a high target for a fastball, and then he ends up throwing him a changeup. So he's just wondering you know you're always trying to protect your signs trying to protect location hitters sometimes can tell by the way a catcher sets up what the pitch is going to be and a good job by Jan Gomes. Eighty three pitches and it looks like the end of the line for the professor. David Ross will take the baseball and we've got a pitching change.
Toyota, official vehicle of the Chicago Cubs, by UI Health, changing medicine for good, and by Michelob Ultra. New pitcher Hayden Wisniewski worked last Friday in Cincinnati, three and a third innings, 56 pitches, six strikeouts, one of his better outings. You see the innings, the ERA, the home runs, strikeout rate. 21.7% right at league average walk rate almost at league average ground ball rate a little bit lower. They're going to need a couple of innings out of him if he can just get through this inning you turn it over to the back end but slider becomes really important. Well, Joe I I have to admit that the first thing I'm going to be looking at with Hayden Wisniewski here is the radar gun because when he came in in Cincinnati he absolutely shoved and he came in throwing 97 98 he touched 99 and he cut his arsenal down and we got to look at that that slider of his that sweeper and it was basically four seamer and sweeper with the occasional sinker there's that slider nothing it was J.D. Davis a single and a run scored and he's also grounded to short. Well, the thing about when you're in the bullpen is you don't need to go through lineups two and three times so you can simplify your stuff and really get after it. And I like the idea of the four seamer slider mix up in the zone with the four seamer down in the zone with the sweeper. In the air center field and that's well struck Bellinger back and that one is gone. A sinker at 96 and Davis takes it out and just like that the Giants have a 6 4 lead. Just did not put that where he wanted to. Yeah, but you talked about he's trying to get this ball in on him because he loves the ball out of the plate, and that's exactly where he left it. And I think if he gets it higher than that, he's okay, but because it's below the waist, JD Davis is able to get to it. JD Davis had a nice night with a homer and a single. And now here's Brandon Crawford 0 for 2. Giants with the lead. First offering misses upstairs. So the eight hits tonight for the Giants, only two singles. Two singles was all they had yesterday. But here tonight, eight hits, six for extra bases. Gabe Kapler's team was up early 3 0, and now they have a 6 4 lead. That four seamer at 97. Crawford hits it hard, but foul down the line. Middle in, and it just pulled it foul. It's been a struggle for him this year, but. Obviously Gabe Kapler has enough faith in him to see him do it enough times that you turn him loose three and up. Veteran guy 36 years old three times an all star four times a gold glover. The three one. And that's high Crawford will take his base so with one out. A man aboard. And it'll bring up Wade Meckler Giants lead at six four. to be looked for a moment like he was going to make a move to the pen. Drew Smiley up and throwing. First one to Meckler. That fastball misses inside. Meckler an RBI single and a strikeout. Nesky gives up the homer here. Last 19 games coming in, the Cubs bullpen had allowed one homer. On the ground, corner onto the outfield grass, spins, throws, and they get Meckler. 
On the play, Crawford is second, two outs. As I've watched him all season, he understands the angles more and more as he's over there, and you see him. He knows he's got time. He gets takes the proper angle of the baseball, comes up with it clean. He's been so impressive at second base. And and lately it's like it's play after play after play. Jack swing, he went. His first base umpire, Carlos Torres. Strata 0 for 2. He's grounded out, popped out. Giants lead 6 4 here with 3 in the 6th. It's stopped by Gomes. And a 1-1. One, one. Oh, that's a good slider. Only two. Yeah, that slider is really tough on right-handed hitters when it almost like starts at you. You think it's a fastball and then it freezes you. Crawford dancing off a second, and so Wisniewski will step off. Hayden won the fifth starter spot to begin the year. He spent some time at Iowa. On the ground to first. And Candelario will take it himself. Steps on the bag. And that is out number three. But the Giants score three times and retake the lead at 6-4 San Francisco. By the Pablo Curcio Auto Group. You're going to like buying a car this way by Prevagen. Prevagen is the number one pharmacist recommended memory support brand. And by Budweiser. This Bud's for you. Welcome back. It's our game summary. It's brought to you by Wind Trust and solo homers from Wade and Yastrzemski and then the big homer from J.D. Davis in a six to give the Giants the lead and here we are. Cubs scored four times on five hits in that third inning. And the new pitcher will be Tyler Rogers. This is interesting. This is another different arm angle, Boog, right? And Tyler and Taylor, you can get them mixed up. Taylor's brother's left handed, but really good numbers. Does not throw hard, 83 to 84, but sink. It's got some rise to it, but you see the low ERA. There's just soft contact. You know, it doesn't strike out a ton of people, but there's a lot of soft contact. Yeah, there's some funk. I mean, you've really got to change your sights. I mean, you're so used to looking, you know, just to the the left of his ear. Now you got to look at the bottom by his kneecaps. On the ground, Estrada gobbles it up. And Magical retired. One away. So it'll be Christopher Morell now. Morell, who came up as a pinch hitter, popped out in the third. Cubs trail it by a couple. We're in the bottom of the sixth. Boog, in this day and age where there's so much power in our game when it comes to pitchers, deception is still really, really important. Tyler Rogers has a hard hit rate of 29.8. The league average is 36.2. Yep. Crawford throws him out. Morrell retired. That's like top 6% in baseball. But it's an angle that nobody sees very yeah. often. And I always wonder uh, are struggling in the minor leagues. They don't try more stuff like this. Create something that people aren't used to seeing. Not necessarily easy to do, but. Sure. Well, the best story that I ever heard on that, remember Mike Myers? Yes. Next to the works of the Players Association. Yes. So Mike, a submarining left-hander, 
who was having trouble pitching with the Tigers pregame one time. The great Al Kaline, the Hall of Famer, said to him, you ever think about dropping down? And he said, no, nah, not really. <laughs> and that night, he warmed up in the pen, throwing submarine, came in with that angle that you're used to seeing, and never stopped. Yeah. And it worked because it was something different, and left-handed hitters weren't comfortable off him. Yep. <laughs> and he gets lefties as well as righties out. I mean, you would expect him to really wear righties up. But he kind of has that up shoot for a lefty, and, and most guys are used to the ball coming down. His actually goes up, so it's really tricky to figure out, okay, where do I swing? Yes. I used to in for a strike now, three and two. I used to try this in wiffle ball. It didn't work so well. So like this, sort of the Quisenberry to Colby. The 3 2. Hit on the ground softly. Crawford charges, unloads, and throws it away. It'll be E6, and with two outs, a man aboard. The Giants have committed the most errors in the majors this year. Well, they called it a hit. I beg your pardon. I apologize, Brandon Crawford. This coverage camp brought to you by T Mobile. Guy running hard and runs well. Crawford knew it. And Nico beat out the hit the last time, yep. and they understand he runs really hard. And one of the things that Brandon Crawford does really well is he goes to his right, but he does not come in well. And that's probably has something to do with age. Look out. Mentioned earlier, he's won the gold glove four times. He was with the Giants when they won in both 12 and 14. And I think when all is said and done, I don't know that you're going to see, I don't think you're going to. You're going to see very many guys on the list. He's one of the best shortstops the Giants have ever had. Yes, I would have to agree with that. Line drive center field, and Meckler is there, and he makes the catch. Half hit that hard, 103.1. End of six at 6-4. Six Nissan, Nissan makes cars the thrill experience to thrill yourself today. Shop Nissan USA. Com. And that's uh, Mr. Smiley now. 31st appearance, obviously mainly been used as a starter. His first 10 starts, he was sensational with an ERA under three. And now it's been used both as a starter. They put an opener in front of him. Now he is in the pen with Wicks in the rotation. Jordan will start tomorrow. Giants have not announced their starter. Pinch hitter will be Austin Slater. Pitch calm, can't hear. Hotovy. Bring out a something freshly charged. One of the things that happens, I got a chance to win the playoffs last year and in both Philadelphia and San Diego, it was loud. And here at Wrigley with Pitchcom. As games have gotten more and more meaningful, guys have to keep turning their pitch comp up the volume higher and higher and higher. 
I got to believe it's some ballparks during the playoffs too. It's even as high as it goes. It's got to be sometimes difficult to hear. Well you'd see pitchers cut yeah. their glove. Over there. E I, can. I did ask a number of guys about it and they s told me they never actually had trouble at the high level here. One, if it was really bumped up volume wise. Well, I like that what they've done with the catchers where they've given them the earpiece and most most guys have it adopted at first a lot of guys just put it in their helmet. I think there was concern that the hitters could hear it. Yeah. Now they all use that earpiece. Swing and a miss. Smiley gets Slater so the pinch hitter retired. Yeah outstanding curveball. He threw him a backdoor one earlier in the count and he throws him another one that's below the zone. He gets him to swing through it. I mean, I think Smiley could be so important as a lefty out of the bullpen here, and he's he's done this a number of times, where he's went back and forth, and he seems to have a really good attitude about it. I think you know all pitchers would rather start if they're a starter, but he understands that he could play a really important role for the Cubs moving forward. Curveball finds the corner. We touched on the way Gabe Kapler and Farhan Zaidi. Have put the roster together and how they use it. 2021, they used 406 pinch hit plate appearances, most by any team since 1974. Schmidt, the pinch hitter, lines to short. And now we're one out away from Big Z in our seventh inning stretch. So I heard you ask him, he's up here, if he had an inning tonight. And I have to ask him, Big Z. He's standing right next to me. How hard do you throw still? I mean, it used to be 100. How hard do you throw? 90? 90. Oh, you get people out of 90. No doubt. Kyle Hendricks is doing it. Right now, the Cubs down two. They could use Big Z's bat. Yeah. Switch hitter. Power from both sides. I went in for a strike. One and one on Flores. And a pitch. Wilmer takes upstairs outside. Wilmer Flores, a native of Venezuela. Ready to start at DH in this. <laughs> That's ripped but foul. Giants jumped out early, led 3 0. The Cubs scored four times in the third to take a 4 3 lead. And the Giants got three back in the sixth. And it's 6 4. Big hit tonight. J.D. Davis, a two run homer off Hayden Wisniewski. So here we go. Three and two, two outs, bases empty. Top seven. Smiley delivers. And that one missed way outside. And now Jock Peterson will get a chance to face the lefty. Peterson's hit it hard. The last two times up, a couple of doubles. Knocked in a run his last time. Rare at bat against left handers. He only has 37 at bats against left handers. He has not fared so well. On the ground, left side, Swanson can't get there. And a base hit the other way. So he gets enough of it to push it through that hole. And now with two outs, there are two aboard. Let's see who gets to hit. Yeah, he just slaps his breaking ball through the hole. He's always been good about hitting the ball the other way and driving the ball, but here he just lets it get deep on him and he sees Dan Dansby up the middle. Probably had a plan that he was going to look for a curveball and try to hit it over there. That's exactly what he did. And it'll be the 
switch in and catcher Patrick Bailey to come up and hit for Sable. Meeting on the mound and a good time to let you know Cubs baseball is presented by the Illinois Lottery. Download the app now to play Illinois Lottery games right from your phone. Just tap it, play it, get it. And here's Bailey. Bailey in a game. Yesterday, 0 for 3 with a couple of strikeouts. Their first round pick in 2020 out of NC State. He began the year at Double A. Documented yesterday, some really in their plans for 2023. Might have gotten a call up, but he's their guy. You know, foul tip into the mitt of Gomes. It's a strike. It's interesting and. In when September the call ups you could call up to you know 15 players or 14 players there was always an extra catcher call up. but now it's an extra pitcher and a usually an extra position player yeah. because they worry about giving those guys some days off because most catchers don't catch 130 games a year anymore. Here's your one. And my point there is he probably would have got called up in September had it been the old roster but. He's emerged as their number one guy. He's a much better hitter against the left handers, so they almost, you know, have a somewhat of a platoon. Sable plays a lot, but he catches more because he is a switch hitter. The 1 1. And that is in for a strike. Smiley's ahead, 1 and 2 on uh, Bailey. In the seventh, Giants lead it by two, and they're threatening. Two outs, two aboard. The kick, the pitch. That one popped foul. Man, he just got that ball off the end of the bat. He was reaching for it, which caused him to pop it up. He was out in front of it. He hasn't picked up his curveball very well in this at bat, but he's already throwing in three of them. You see, he's underneath it, reaching for it. Just didn't stay in play. Let's see if we can get him to chase one. Swing and a miss, struck him out. Smiley gets out of the jam. Our seventh inning stretch is brought to you by Budweiser. This Bud's for you. Big Z is our guy here tonight. Take me out to the ball game. Former Chicago Cubs pitcher Carlos Sandrano. All right, Cubs fans, it's good to be back here in Chicago with the greatest fans all of, all of, in, in baseball. Let me hear you at one, two, three. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out with the crowd. And all the biggest moments in the Cubs minor league system. Tune in tomorrow at 6. Road to Wrigley. This one to Bellinger is in for a strike. Defensive changes right there. Slater and right. Schmidt at third, Davis at first. Bailey is catching. And Davis beats Bellinger to the base. One up, one down. 
sitting over here laughing because I didn't hear it get over and he didn't get over. So take that, JD. And fouls one back. One out, base is empty. You're in the bottom half of the seventh. Giants bullpen mentioned they have thrown the most innings of any bullpen in the majors. A 3 7 3 ERA. It's fifth best in the National League. since May 1st for Gabe Kapler's group. They do a really good job of mixing and matching. I mean, you look at their bullpen, they have four left-handers, they have like five or six right-handers down. They can set up favorable matchups. One of the things it seems that is a concept in the modern bullpen is different looks. Yeah. The exhibit A is on the map. Well, think about how different Tyler Rogers is from from the starter tonight Ryan Walker I mean different 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 than Junis different stuff yes Swanson will take his base leadoff man it's aboard probably the Rays are the team you think about first and foremost is doing it. I talked to their president of baseball operations Eric Neander about putting a bullpen together and I said is it as simple as if you have a tall lean right hander you're looking for a short fat lefty and he <laughs> laughed and he said kind of so it, it really is yeah but wouldn't it be a short portly right hander and a tall lean right hander because a lefty and a righty are completely different. Playing the role of fat lefty will be yours truly. John Shaw, Joe Girardi, Budweiser broadcast booth, <laughs> Taylor McGregor's downstairs. Yeah, that's why I don't like, you know, the feature guy I like. I don't like bulk guy as, as a husky type fella. You like feature guy? Feature guy. I like that. The feature guy. Innings eater? The, yeah. yeah. Snap throw and Swanson dives back in. Bailey will throw from every angle. <laughs> He's got as quick a release this side of JT Real Muto. Yeah. He's very good at throwing sidearm. That one wasn't so much sidearm, but he's really quick. He gets the ball in the air, and that's what you talk about as a catcher. Get the ball in the air because the, the ball is going to travel quicker than you moving. So the sooner you get it in the air, the better off, and he's really good at that. Say Suzuki with the count three and one.
16th of the year. Getting the love in the dugout. And a pitching change. Seiya Suzuki has tied this game up. Six apiece here in the seventh. Chicago Cubs, Seiya Suzuki, he knew it. Got a breaking ball up and clobbered it. Seiya Suzuki on a slider. 11 games, 11 extra base hits, including three homers. And now it's Jammer Candelario, and Luke Jackson will take over. Luke Jackson had a really good career at Atlanta. It ended up having Tommy John, but he's been really good since he's come back. Boog, this is a slider monster. Almost 70% sliders. Has a four seamer as well. Strikeout guy. And Delario lifts that in the air. Oh, Peterson! And he overran it. It falls. Candelario is into second. Don't know whether the wind took it or what happened, but you could tell as soon as he came in, he was done. Yeah. And there, it was past him. There are bad hops in the air, Boog. That's exactly what happened. Right? This ball he runs over, and all of a sudden, I think the wind gets it. It gets above the roof. The wind gets it and pushes it back away from him. And uh-oh, uh-oh. That's a bad feeling, Boog. I did that a number of times as a catcher. You want to crawl in a hole. Ground ball up the middle. Crawford spins, and they can't get going. Safe at first. Infield hit. Jan Gomes third hit of the night. Well I talked about how Brandon Crawford goes so well to his right but not as well to his left and is not able to get enough on this throw as, as we watch this it's hit perfectly right between the two infielders. He goes to his left because he's running so hard it takes him a few steps to get rid of it on the spin and Jan Gomes is safe. Catchers don't get too many infield hits. We get pretty excited about those. I know. Right up there with stolen bases. 6-6, six, six, first and third, infield in. Downstairs, ball one. Madrigal a single. He's bounced into a fielder's choice, and he's grounded to second. Mitt Crawford, Estrada, Davis on the edge of the grass. And Magical takes downstairs. Bailey mentioned good thrower, good framer, good blocker. Yeah, and if you're Magical, this is where you have to look for a breaking ball up in the zone. As I said, he throws almost 70% breaking balls. You don't want to get out front and beat one into the ground. You want to stay inside it and see if you can get it to the air because the wind's going to help you if you get a fly ball to the outfield. It should score Candelaria. Now let me ask you this. Where are you in terms of managing this? Nick Madrigal is a ground ball candidate. Yeah, I would think about a safety squeeze here. I, I, you know, I think you have J.D. Davis, who's a much better third baseman than a first baseman. Jackson at 2-0. And that's high. And now it's 3-0. Here's the other thing, though. With the infield in, it's kind of hard to turn a double play. I think Tyro Estrada's back enough that if it was hit to short or third, he could get there. But Nick runs pretty well, so it's probably why he's letting him swing. The 3-0. Through there for a strike. Jackson, 32 years old. 
too, was part of that Braves team that won it all in 21. Chopped foul of third. Putting Jan Gomes in motion to try to stay out of the double play, which forces them to go home with the ball. Magical good contact guy. Candelario is the go ahead run. He's at third. 6 6. We're in the seventh. And a 3 2. Bounce towards third. Schmidt coming home. Throw. Squirts away. Safe is Candelario. Down to third is Gomes. Madrigal to second. And the Cubs have the lead 7 6. Really a tough play for Casey Schmidt because he's having to go backwards on this high hopper. And he's got an outstanding arm. He just bounces it. And Bailey, as good as he is back there, he's not able to come up with it. This ball was thrown hard and he gets through his wickets. He's trying to block the plate. And now the Cubs have a couple more runners in scoring position. And on a night where the ball's kind of flying a little bit, these two would be some nice insurance run, boo. And this is just a good job by everyone involved, everyone advancing. A base because of the air. So magical with that chopper to third, a challenging play for Schmidt. It wasn't able to get the out at home. So now a 7 6 Cub lead, second and third, infield still in. Morrell first pitch swinging and taps it foul. Yeah, that breaking ball causes you to hit the ball on the ground because it's a breaking ball with depth. And if you're out in front of him as a hitter, you're going to roll over to the left side. So you really got to force yourself to try to hit this ball to right center. Stay inside this breaking ball. Pitch outside and it's one and one. The Cubs seven runs, 12 hits in an error. The Giants six, nine and one. Four lead changes in this one. Gomes is at third. Madrigal at second. Here's a 1 1. And now Morell calls time. Christopher Ohl for two. Morell's been really good on sliders this year, and I think Luke Jackson recognizes that. I think if he was to throw him one, it would have to be a chase. I would think that he might try to go up here again. One, two, drilled center field. Chasing back, Meckler turning, looking, gone! It's a free run homer, Christopher Morrell. And the Cubs lead it 10 6. This home run is brought to you by Hefty, 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 ultra strong, ultra low price. A slaughter that does not get down enough. He threw two fastballs by him up in the zone. Christopher Morale has been very good on sliders. He takes it up the middle and hits this ball out of the ballpark for a three run home run. And a little backflip, a little style there, boo. Have some fun, kid. And this place coming undone. Tell you what, it was kind of a late arriving crowd tonight. Mm -hmm. Maybe the game time starting at 6:40 instead of 7:05. People were a little bit late, but this place is rocking. A 1-1 one -one. on the ground, but foul of first. Yeah. This home run. He knows he's got it. Watch the back. Oh.
The one two. And Nico swings and misses. It's a strikeout. Tell you what, Christopher Morrell has been struggling at the plate and has not been playing as much because of his struggles, but he comes up with another big home run. He had the big home run, the walk off a couple weeks ago. App swings and misses. Well, again, I it's man, this team's interesting from the standpoint of. Even when he's struggling or wisdom is struggling on the other side they're sitting there and they're tense because those guys have the ability to get out of it with one swing. Boog, I remember he led off one game in New York and I said I like this because it's like game on to start. Right. It's it's right. Make a decision because it can be one nothing really really fast. quick and it was. And that's the ability that he has. Half gone on strikes and the inning is over but not before the Cubs come up with six runs. Morrell with the big blast and it's 10 six. Launch the new app enhancing the streaming experience for all Cubs fans for more information visit watchmarquee.com. Cubs with the lead. Double figures again the 22nd time for this Cubs team. It's the most for the Cubs in a season since 1935. And just to give you an idea this year 22 times 10 or more runs the last three years combined they didn't do it that many. New pitcher is Mark Leiter Jr. What a job he's done all year for him. He's pitched a lot lately. He got a couple days off. He's probably feels a lot better. He's their guy that really used to get out lefties in high leverage situations. It's like he's got a little more zip tonight, Boo. Ground but foul. The great split that he has really neutralizes the left handed hitters, but right handers struggle with it too. He's got a pretty good breaking ball that I like to see him throw once in a while. One two to Davis. Boog, if I may. Please. I just want to wish my daughter Lena a happy birthday. Today was her birthday. Serena's was on Sunday, so happy birthday to her as well. A lot of birthdays in the Girardi household. Man. So you've been busy shopping. Yeah. Kim really has been busy shopping. Okay. Center field. And Bellinger can't make the play. Going to get it his hat. And it's a double for Davis. Tell you what, he's really good when he gets the ball away from him, and that's what he got there. And it, I think it might have been a split. Cody almost got there just beyond him. Actually, his glove went underneath it. Maybe he lost it in the lights a little bit. He talked about that sometimes losing the ball in the lights here. Yep. There's Crawford now the man at second and nobody out. We're in the eighth the Cubs and the Giants a seesaw affair. And right now the. Cubs are on the right side of the seesaw. I don't know which way the right side of the seesaw is because I mean it just sort of depends on what your preference is really right because if you like being up in the air. That's the side the Cubs are on but if you like being down on the ground that's the side the Cubs are on either way. They're up 10 six. Sliced foul. <laughs> I'm not sure I completely follow that. I thought when you said on the right side of the seesaw, it depends on what side you are and what side you're looking at. I'm saying like. Yeah, I get you now. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't sure where you were going with that. I was going to have him put us on camera and I was going to use my pen to show the way the seesaw goes. But <laughs> the 1 1. Swing and a miss. Pretty nasty cutter there, Boo. 
I like that. Usually kind of dangerous to, to left-handers, but it's in off the plate enough. Down and in, they was trying to backdoor it, and it actually became really effective because it was below the zone inside. And I always say if you're going to miss, miss by 17 inches. Don't miss by a little bit. Those are the balls that get hammered. One, two to Crawford. Fouled off. That got a piece of Gomes. Yeah, that looked like the upper thigh. Take a look at this. Justin Steele can talk to him about the recovery from this. Oh, right on the kneecap. I Book, you know that 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 hurts for about 30 seconds to a minute, but then it goes away. Because there's not a lot of feeling in your kneecap. And it, it hurts when you get a direct hit like that, but that pad saves you and it goes away. Jan Gomes is probably saying, I could have done without that. Slice towards left center, and that'll touch down for a hit. Bellinger will pick it up, fire it towards second. A run will come in. It's a long RBI single for Crawford, and the Giants get a run back. 10-7. Tell you, this is really good play by Cody Bellinger, holding him to a single on this ball in the gap. I mean, this ball's almost to the warning track. I know it's hit hard. He reaches for it, a split that's a little bit higher than he wants. Cody Bellinger makes a really accurate throw and as the base runner that ball is in front of you so all you got to do is watch the throw and read the throw and if you see it's online you stop and that's exactly what Brandon Crawford did. Too many times they rely on the base coaches or they put their head down. Just read the throw yourself. Well, that one was right in his lane. Mitch Hanniger will hit here in the eighth. Man at first, nobody out. Giants with a run in. Cubs lead 10-7. Hanniger's really been struggling as of late, but if you look at Mark Leiter, he's, he has much more success against left-handers than right-handers. He's a reverse split guy. But Gabe Kapler went to Hanniger, and Hanniger has more power than Meckler. Need for a strike, and now it's nothing get two. They signed Hanniger this offseason. Hanniger and Conforto, the two position playing signees, main guys that they signed. Remember, they were in on Correa, couldn't get the medical done. And softly to third, magical charges, fires on the move. Out at first. That's a nice play by Nick. Yeah, that's a really good play by Nick Madrigal. I've talked about how good he's been at third base. I know we talk so much about Horner and Swanson, but he comes in and gets his ball and, and really gets something behind the throw. I mean, usually for a second baseman, they're charging at the throw at sidearm. That was overhand and really a good job. So Madrigal making the play. And David Ross will take the baseball for Mark Leiter Jr. Jose Quas coming on. Pitching change here. Cubs lead at 10 7. For the Cubbies, but moments ago, Nick Madrigal making an amazing play to get Mitch Hanniger out at first. And Earlier today I was talking to Nick again about playing third base in the transition and he said that charging play has been one of the biggest things to adapt to. He watched a lot of YouTube videos on Alex Bregman because they have similar body types on the footwork that goes along with it. But I think this graphic just speaks to what we've been talking about when you look at most outs above average by a third baseman in all of Major League Baseball. Nick is fifth. Yeah well I think the one thing you got to remember and sorry to get my nerd on, but outs above average is a counting stat. And Nick Madrigal, whereas he settled in as their guy at third base, you're still talking about a dude. Today is his 53rd start. They played, this is game number 139. Yeah, there's a lot of guys that have probably played 130 games. Right. That, yeah, he's been absolutely. A so he's racking up in, in a counting stat. Outs above average, having played far less than everybody else, it makes that number even more impressive. That one 
tap foul off the bat of Estrada. Quas. Yeah, Jose Quas on for the fourth time in fifth night, five nights, and uh, but he's only thrown 29 pitches in those three outings before. Strikeout rate's pretty normal. Hope he can keep the ball on the ground here. Jack Swing, did he go? Yes, he did. Yeah, this is a different arm angle move. This is not what you see on an everyday basis. And he ties him up with his fastball and gets the call on the check swing from Carlos Torres at first base. Hits softly, Swanson on a bounce. Gets rid of it quickly, and a nice play by Dansby. Hey, fans! Friday, the Cubs take on the Diamondbacks at 1:20 p.m. The first 10,000 early arriving fans will receive a replica City Connect jersey, presented by Benjamin Moore. Purchase tickets at Cubs.com/specials. Like what that. Was your number? What was your number, Boop? What number would you want? Probably 15. By the way, Nick Magical, we were talking about Taylor documenting the improvements that he's made, the adjustments, but how he's in a top. But six an ounce above average. He's 27th in the majors in innings played at third base. 27. Two down. Slater up here. Good fastball by Quash. You see that little bit of a late movement, an uncomfortable slot for right handers. Slater usually plays against left handers. And the pitch. Been a great crowd tonight. A lot of energy. Two balls, two strikes. Slater waits, cross fires. Swanson, tough hop. And now Horner will pick it up, throw to third, tag there, safe. Oh boy. They almost got Crawford. David Ross saying, please hold. Yeah, this is not something we see very often, but air by Swanson. Nico picks it up and makes a quick throw to third. Great slide. Yeah, Brandon Crawford just got back. You see this ball come up on him a little bit. I feel like you could, you could see it coming a little yeah. bit in terms of the hop. Yeah. I believe that is error number eight on Dansby. Double check. Correct. A foul ball. In the air, right field, Suzuki pulls it down. Schmidt retired. And Quas able to limit the damage. 10 7. Hyundai. One more with the Giants tomorrow. Jordan Wicks gets the start. And then four with the Arizona Diamondbacks. A night game on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, all 121st pitch starts. And then it is off to Colorado and Arizona. Upcoming schedule presented by Hyundai. Taylor Rogers, the other brother, the older brother.
done a really good job for them. He's been a closer in his career. A little higher strikeout rate, a little higher walk rate as well. But you see the good ERA, 2.72 and 46 in the third. More of a situational guy, not a bulk guy for these guys. Sorry, Boog, not bulk. What do, you, what do you call it? Feature. Feature. Boy, thank God the Giants don't have like a 40 man roster up. Can you imagine how many changes they would make? I mean, <laughs> I, mean I, would, I would run out of ink in all the changes. Zero two. And upstairs. Eight different Cubs have a hit tonight. Eight different Cubs have scored a run. We touched on it yesterday. If there's a thing that is sort of the thread with this Cubs offense, I don't know that you would have seen it coming. They'd be third in the National League in runs per game but this lineup the same lineup is yesterday Bellinger gone on strikes we documented yesterday how of the nine guys in the lineup seven of the nine are above average in the perspective of weighted runs created plus and then the two guys that are below average aren't in the 70s or the 80s, they're 93, 94, 100 being average. So I, I would doubt that there are many teams putting that out there. No, and that's why they're third in, in run score. Yeah. And you think about for, for players, most position players, offense is the fun part. And when you have everyone contributing, like Watson Dan laces that one out into right center field. That's got to feel good for Dansby. That bobble briefly, so it'll be a single. Yeah, this is a really good job of Dansby getting out of the box and running hard right away. Thinking double right away. I got a double, 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 and I'm going to pick it up. Oh no, he's going to pick it up. No, he drops it, so I can go on to second. Just really good base run. But that's the other thing that the Cubs do so well. They run the bases so well. They're they're not flyers, yeah. but they're really smart base runners. And and when everyone's contributing, it makes it a really good clubhouse to come to every day. I mean, these guys generally have fun and cheer for each other. And it's a great day every day for them. Time down for StatCast, powered by Google Cloud, Seiya Suzuki. Clobbering a slider, 1077, the exit below, 407 feet. Three more hits. And his OPS up over 800 now. A little emergency hack and pull the front foot out of the way so I don't hit myself in my front leg. <laughs> okay, this ball's coming in farther than I thought. Oh, let me move that leg. Get that leg out of the way. Go between his legs? I think it did. Every day, move. It happens. Every day, every day. One time a day. One, two to Saya. Oh. Look out. Back up the middle. Swanson around third on his way to the plate. It's an RBI single. Stay hot. Say a Suzuki. A four hit night. And the Cubs lead it 11 7. 
you know, since he's been staying on that fastball, Dustin Kelly talked about, it. boy, he sure hit some breaking balls hard, too. I mean, Dustin Kelly told him, get back on that fastball, be ready for it. But this is a breaking ball out over the plate. It almost hits Rodgers, just gets out of the way. And another really hard hit ball. Three RBIs last night, three tonight. Have a month, two months. And he's been locked in. It's one of those things that's hard, right? When you're looking for results in what is a results based business, certainly fans and media look at it that way, and so do the players. But inside that clubhouse, he is looked at as maybe their most talented hitter. Crawford to second for one, return to first, and a double play. 6 4 3, the Cubs add a run. Seiya Suzuki, four hits tonight. It's 11 7. Showing that fight, Christopher Morell, a big three run homer. Cubs lead it 11 7. They put up that fat, crooked number in the seventh inning. And here is Julian Merriweather, been yeah. one of the top leverage arms in the pen. Yeah, what a, what a year he's had. His last 17 games, a 1.40. You see the strikeout rate 82 strikeouts, sixth amongst relievers in baseball. Pretty amazing when you look at this guy. He was claimed off of waivers. This past offseason from the Blue Jays. And we see him consistently hitting triple digits. He's 31 years old, California kid. He went to Oklahoma Baptist University. And his junior year, he was throwing between 87 and 91. So what happened? Well, he got into using weighted balls a weighted ball program and he went to a place called the Texas Baseball Ranch where they do these things called pull downs where you're basically trying to throw as hard as you can and he gets a swing and miss right there he's got a good slider good change up but between his junior and senior year he went from throwing 87 to 91 to throwing 96 plus it's an and story I mean, it just that training, he said, was what really got him over the hump. And I mean, way over the hump, right? One and two, here it comes. But check this picture out. This is from 10 years ago. Baby looking Julian Merriweather. Check out the gun, 101.1. He said he'd never thrown 95, let alone 100. When he did that pull down, that's from the Texas baseball range. And he just hit 99.9, I believe. So it's still in there. It's crazy, though, to think of a guy throwing 87 to 91 and then 96. The 2 2. Swing and a foul back. I think the one part of it that's interesting, man, Joe, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, we basically thought that velocity was kind of God given and you couldn't train it at least not much. Yeah, it's really changed with what they're able to do with all these programs that they have. The big thing is is being able to command it. 2 2 hit in the air left field pretty well struck half back near the wall and it's into the basket and gone. Flores takes a slider and hits it out and it's 11 8. You know, Boog, it almost sounded like he got jammed a little bit. We talked about the wind, how it was blowing out to left field, and maybe it aided it a little bit. But that's his 13th home run since July 17th, and here's the breaking ball, and it sounds like he doesn't get this on the barrel. I mean, he gets it down a little bit. You know, it's, it's close to the barrel, but it's not on the barrel. But he does such a good job of yeah. going down instead of going forward as a hitter that he's able to stay back. It was 93.1. I think the wind may have helped at least a touch. 
93.1 WXRT. Pretty good rock and roll station, Boog. Used to be, I know. I mean, you dropped 40 years. I mean, 40 years ago it was. Sorry. It just, it, it, it felt like hearkening to, like, the infield grass is long and the field is crowned and you couldn't see the guy in, from the dugout in left field. Did I say that? No. I didn't say that. I know. I was just taking liberties. So. Yeah, I got it. I took liberties. I, yeah. I, Midwestern grass is thicker than a lot of other places. You grew up on the East Coast. Grass is thick on the East Coast, too. Here's a one two. Got a check swing at a foul. Well, Joe, you lived in New York City. How much grass did you see? Because that's where Boot grew up. Okay, I didn't live in New York City. I played in, in New York. I didn't live in the city. I lived in Westchester. The one two is upstairs two balls and two strikes she's making a very fair point that my limited exposure to grass uh, yeah I'm sorry Taylor I, I take that back yeah I, I'm not the I'm not the grass expert <laughs> it was a funny swing there Boog. that was like a, an emergency hack yeah. a fastball up and in and he realized that it wasn't going to be a strike, and he started to swing, and it's just, oh, let me just try to foul this. Ah, pulling his hands in again, Boog. Oh. That one you need to stay fair, because that's probably an out if it stays fair. It's amazing. It, is, that, is he wearing direct protect on his left thumb? Yeah, he is. Or one of those thumb guards. Yeah, or his thumb would be hurting right now. Yeah. Get people asking every once in a while. You see a lot of guys wear that thumb protector. You usually wear it on the top hand thumb. And it rests between the index finger and the thumb just to help you if you get jammed. See that black thing he's got on his thumb. Jack Peterson essentially playing for his hometown team. He he was drafted by the Dodgers, and his dad had a cup of coffee with the Dodgers. But he grew up in Palo Alto. Three two. And that is ball four. Time now for How Far Did It Travel? It's driven by the Bob Locurcio Auto Group. Christopher Morrell unloading. Joe Girardi, How Far Did It Travel? Well, he only sent that one 431 feet. Backflip of about 50 feet. I guess you give that a total of 481 to 431 feet. Get to add the backflip on. Old Young, a check swing, and he went. Talking to Paul Young, Paul Young pregame. He's telling me about moving from Florida to Illinois. He said when he was in sixth grade, coming to a game here, somewhere around 2004, and he talked about seeing Sammy Sosa hit an absolute nuke. Out. Well, his father lives in the neighborhood, doesn't he? His father came and saw him when he was with St. Louis. Yep. Yeah, in Wrigleyville. Five pinch hitters tonight from. The Giants, not surprising. Cubs lead it 11 8. Merriweather trying to take down the final three outs. And 
that's in there and no argument from DeYoung one away. After he's thrown the fastball up and the breaking ball down he comes and paints a fastball down in the zone at 98 for a call strike three big out. Boog, I got a question. OK. Sable's out. Yeah. Bailey's out. Who's going to catch. If they get to the bottom of the ninth. That's a great question. I'm going to text Dave Fleming right now. <laughs> Been a tough spot in the order. The number five slot is 0 for 5 with 5 K's. Three hitters, three different hitters. Sable, Bailey, and Young. Casey Schmidt, maybe? I, that's, I would think so. I'm sure, there's not a lot of people volunteering. Who's the Cubs emergency catcher? Is it Madrigal? It, it's always, they always do it to one of the guys built low to the ground. I would guarantee it's either <laughs> Madrigal or Master Boney. And I haven't even asked. The one two didn't go. Yeah, Carlos Torres has called a number of these strikes, and I and I think he's been right on every one. I think that's an outstanding call. I would have liked that he went, but he did. On the ground, they get one. with Jerry closes it out 11 8 your final what a night for Seiya Suzuki four hits including a homer and the Cubs go for the sweep tomorrow sing this song Another single here in that big inning in the in the seventh inning, three for four tonight, two RBIs. Caught a tough game, a tough night for pitchers, but got him through it. And if you can't find it at Benny's, it's probably not worth drinking. Outstanding game for the Cubs.
us and considering us gentlemen and they're going crazy at Bob's Country Bunker right now because they have both kinds of music country and western and they're celebrating a Cubs win as we hear Jake and Elwood play us out. Uh, Clownside Cliff, I'm Cole. Cubs Post Game Live. We're back after this.